What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of Bird Talk. Really excited to be doing this right now. It's June 1st. We're heading into the home stretch before upland seasons open up. A lot of western states open up September 1st or sometime in the beginning of September. And that's where our sights are set right now back to be chasing birds again. I will definitely be out there. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there for the opener. Um, but at some point in Montana, beginning of the season, I will be, I'll be out there. Really excited to be out there. Really excited to be talking right now and bringing a new different platform to our content and hopefully something you guys can find enjoyable and take a few things away from. So with seasons approaching here fast in the next three months, gosh, I mean, that's even, that's hard to believe. I feel like I can totally replay everything from last September, October, November, December, January when we went down to Arizona perfectly in my head already and it feels like I can just reach out and grasp it like it was just last week but I mean here we are sitting in June getting ready to go hunting again here soon so it's time to get dogs conditioned, work on steadiness, obedience training, whatever it is you want to do with your dog to get it prepared for your upcoming hunting season to be successful. And I want to take a minute for today's topic to dive into getting your dog mentally prepared to go on a hunting trip and be as successful as that dog possibly can be on that trip outside of just your regular, you know, conditioning, training, steadiness, training, obedience, whatever it is that you do with your dog. Uh, because going on a trip that's five, seven, ten days long, it's a huge shakeup from your normal routine that your dog has at home and dogs are great in the aspect of their man's best friend they can handle most situations pretty well they'll follow you until the end of time no matter where you go but there is a few things we can do to make sure our dogs have an easy transition from home life to field life uh, my personal three dogs all live in the house with us and as mentioned there's a huge difference between our routines here and the routines on the road. So my goal and mindset throughout the year is how can I make our life at home that much closer to what it's gonna be like on the road and make sure my dogs are mentally prepared for the trip we're about to do and set them up for success to perform at their highest level. So before we get into that, I wanna take a quick minute and talk about Bird Talk and what this is and what we're gonna try and do on this platform. So I guess if you want to call this a podcast, um, I'm trying to stay away from that term maybe. I'm trying to maybe put just a little bit of a different spin on this from what you hear from your typical podcast. Uh, I want to keep this short, focused on specific topics, make it easy to digest, short to the point, and hopefully you can take something away without having to sort through long conversations that cover multiple topics. And I want, the, I want all this to be user-generated content too. So if there's something you want to be here talked about, um, you know, drop a comment, an idea on this video. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to go on to other platforms such as like, let's say Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, things like that yet. It may be in the works potentially depending on how this takes off. But again, like I said, I want to keep these videos short, sweet talk about a few good talking points and hopefully give you guys something to chew on and give you a different mindset from the other typical stuff that you hear from a lot of the Upland stuff that's going on right now. There's a lot of great podcasts out there with a lot of great information. Um, but as far as this goes, I'm going to try and steer us in a little bit of a different direction and we're going to see where it ends up at. So yeah, really, really excited about it. So with that said, Let's get into mentally preparing your dog to go on a hunting trip. Like I said, a hunting trip as in five, seven, ten days long, however long you're going. Um, a lot of people do weekend trips, three-day trips, things like that. You go up north, go hunting, or you have a spot a few hours away. You go to, you stay at a cabin, or you know, uh, you, you camp, whatever you're doing. You, you go out on the weekends and it's it's easy for a dog to handle to be away from home it's not a huge shake up from the dog's regular routine but when you talk about going on a big organized trip that you've been planning for a while a trip you want to be successful on uh it's a it's a little different in my opinion than you know just having a two-day weekend trip especially when the dog is so used to your routine at home 
and then you take that dog out of that routine and you expect that dog to perform at its highest level. I mean, even myself personally, I know me being on the road, it's a lot different than being at home. I eat a lot different. I drink a lot different. Um, my sleeping schedule is a lot different. And as I've gotten older here, it takes my body a little bit more time to adapt to that than, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of just a shock. Uh, from how I eat, drink, sleep on the road compared to my daily everyday life here. Uh, you're talking long days in the field, sun beating down on you, different weather climates, uh, all kinds of different variables that are so much different than what you and your dog are used to at home. And if I can feel it, I know my dog is definitely doing or is definitely feeling it too. So my whole goal and mindset is to make sure that our routine at home is as close to an easy transition to what we're going to be doing on the field and in these hunting trips. So normal home life, it's cool, calm, laid back, same scenario for the most part every day. Let's call your home life a controlled environment. Now you go on the road, on the field, and things change. Things change fast, not just on the daily, but on the hour, where you're at, how you're traveling, you're in constant motion, you're in you know different places that you're staying. The dog is exposed to a lot of different environments, different environments from traveling, uh, hunting, uh, rest areas, your nightly, daily routine, whatever you want to call it, your dog is completely exposed to a different situation than what it's used to at home. Um, so I, I'm going to start this out with, let's say putting our dogs, um, let's just talk about travel first, traveling to our destination, our road trip, um, wherever we're going on our hunt, that involves a lot of kennel time, right? So your dog has to be prepared to be in a kennel for extended periods of time, five, six, seven hours. So, I mean, maybe, maybe you work all day and your dog is kenneled. That's, you have a great head start. If you do kennel training with your dog, excellent start right there. Uh, but there's still a little bit of a difference between your dog being on the road in a kennel versus just being at home waiting for you. Um, there's a lot of motion that goes in with traveling with a dog, especially when you're talking five, six, seven. I mean, Crap, we drive out to Montana, and it's a 22-hour drive. We drive down to Arizona. It's a 26, 28-hour drive with stops in between, and that's quite a bit of different than your dog just being in a kennel for five, six, seven hours um, while maybe you're at work or even if you're not at work and your dog does a couple hours in the kennel here or there. So how can we prepare our dog to be in the kennel for long, extended periods of times? And one thing that we do here with our dogs. We have three dogs, three Britneys. And what I like to do a couple times throughout the summer, maybe every couple weeks, something like that, is besides just them being in their kennels here in the house at different intervals, is we'll load up the dogs in the kennels in the back of the truck. Um, maybe we're going shopping for an afternoon. We have a topper on our truck. I'll open up the windows, get a good breeze going in there. And if we're going to run some errands or chores, we'll just throw the dogs in the back and they can hang out in the cab or I'm sorry, not the cab, but in the back while we go from stop to stop, get them adjusted to being on the move, stopping, going. Um, I, I know a lot of times with dogs, especially when you stop, they get excited. They're like, oh boy, this is it. We're going hunting here. Um, they kind of, you know, break out of their little mold that they, or sleep that they might be in. And once the vehicle stops and they're like, Oh, it's game time. Here we go. But when you're traveling, you stop and get gas, you're getting food. Um, geez, I don't know, even if you broke down on the side of the road for some reason and you have to stop, you need your dog to be prepared. And in the mindset that every time you stop, you're not just, the dog isn't just being let out and getting to burn off energy or go hunting. So what I like to do with the dogs is just throw them in the kennel. We're going to go and run some errands for a few hours and you guys are just going to sit tight in there and we're going to go do our thing. And I expect you to remain calm, be cool, level headed. And when I tell you it's time to come out, it's time to come out then at that point. So just something to think about um, going into traveling with your dog. Uh, just getting on the routine of thinking, you know, I'm going to travel 18, 12, 18, 16, 20 hours, however far you're driving to go on your trip. 
Um, you know, asking a dog to do that if it's not prepared to do that is a big task. And you want your dog to show up fresh with a good mindset when you get to your destination to finally go hunting. So let's say, all right, now we've gotten travel out of the way. We're here with our dog. We've arrived at our destination. It's time to go hunting finally. We go out, we go hunting. We have a great afternoon of hunting. Let's say everybody has a good run. Um, now it's time to come back to camp. What am I going to do with my dogs? Well, I'm going to put my dogs on a stakeout. And being on a stakeout is a lot different than, okay, we're done hunting for the afternoon. Now everybody is just coming home and the dogs are going to get to chill out in their kennel. If you have a bed for them or just hang out in the house, whatever they're used to doing, going on a stakeout, if a dog is not used to being in that position is a lot different um, than home life. So again, into the topic of all this revolves around is home life versus field life. How do we prepare our dog um, for home life and field life and how to kind of mesh those two things together? So I usually, when we're on hunting trips, our dogs spend a lot of time on stakeouts because that's the, the safest place for them to be in environments that we don't know. It's the best place for them to keep their selves uh, rested without just wandering around, sniffing, getting into whatever, and just burning up energy they don't need to be burning up, uh, getting fresh air besides them just being locked in a kennel. So again, stakeouts is, or if you're putting your dogs on a cable, whatever it is, that's what um, makes the most sense to me personally to do with my dog while we're on a trip. It keeps them safe. It keeps them um, their energy levels ready to go, and it's a good way to keep the keep tabs on the dog and exactly what they're going through, how they're feeling, and what they're doing. So if you get a stakeout, you're going on a trip, and you can't just I don't think you can just expect unless you have a really even-headed dog. Um, but a lot of dogs ride low or they ride high. Um, there's a lot of great dogs out there that are very even keeled, level headed, can handle a lot of situations, but not all of them handle those situations perfectly. So how do we set our dog up for success to be in that situation, no matter how its mentality or personality is? And being on a stakeout, like I've said a couple times now is a lot different than just being at home resting hanging out your the dog is in different weather environments let's say we wake up in the morning um, and I'm going to put the dog on a stakeout it's cold out it's cool maybe there's some frost on the ground that's a big difference from how I wake up at home with my dogs and what they experience there so my dogs need to be ready to be in that situation so what I will do with my dogs is every morning I've kind of got a little routine going up we wake up, they sleep in kennels at night, they come out of the kennels, and they go outside. I'll let them run around for a minute or two, then put them on a stakeout. And then I'll let them sit on that stakeout for sometimes it's a half hour, sometimes it's 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. Whatever it is that we're doing in our life, we take care of that, and the dogs just chill remain calm on the stakeouts because we want them to be used to being on a stakeout. We want them to be comfortable being on a stakeout. We don't want to go on a hunting trip and a dog is just stressed out sitting outside in the grass uh, or bare dirt. If you do place training or anything like that, it's a great head start. Your dog is used to being in one spot, in one situation where you tell it to be for a while, but your dog being on a stakeout where it's exposed to the elements of the world, uh, whether you get, maybe you're getting a little rain that morning, it's just sprinkling a little bit. Obviously, you're not going to just put your dog out there in a thunderstorm and be like, good luck, dude, have fun. We're on a stakeout and a hunting trip. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But if it's a situation where there's a little bit of light rain coming down, maybe it's cool, it's breezy, and that's just what the day's weather is, and that's what you're dealing with, the dog has to be prepared to deal with that and so if you're doing a lot of place training at home and the dog is used to you know sitting on a bed in an AC uh, perfectly temp controlled room that's a big difference even though the dog is used to being told to stay in one spot that's a big difference than you know being out on bare dirt and the sun shining down or the wind blowing really hard or whatever experience that the weather is it's a lot different than what's going on in your home so I get my dogs out in the morning, put them on a stakeout, I let them sit and calm down on that stakeout, and the whole overall goal with the stakeout and something you can do to get the dog used to being on the stakeout is turn it into a reward. 
So if you put your dog out there in the morning, you let it sit, maybe it doesn't calm down at first, it eventually calms down, go out, give it some food or give it some love, pets, whatever it is to re- you use to reward your dog, make it feel comfortable for what it just accomplished. So with my dogs, I'll put them on the stakeout, I'll let them sit there for however long until I feel that they've, you know, they've calmed down or they're in a mentally stable place. Uh, then I'll go give them food. I'll give them their breakfast and they eat breakfast out on the stakeout chain. And that's one way you can reward a dog for being good on a stakeout chain. Another reward could be is if you know a dog is sitting nicely on a stakeout chain, you go out, you let it out, and then you just take it on a run or a walk or you know, you, you, you're doing your bird work. Maybe take your dog to wherever you do your training at and put it on a stakeout and let it sit there for 20 minutes and calm down before you go and do your bird work. Don't just let the dog out of the kennel and take it into the field and let it do its, do its thing. You know, Give the dog an opportunity to be on a stakeout, get comfortable with being on the stakeout, and then give it a reward by taking it out and doing its bird work, You know, getting bird shot over it, chasing pigeons, whatever you're running your dog on, that's the reward for the situation and the scenario that the dog was just in for sitting on that stakeout. Um, Another thing that stakeouts are great for, and this is another thing to get your dog comfortable with doing, is going to the bathroom on a stakeout. Um, Your dog is maybe, you you wake up in the morning, you let him outside, and let him go do your business. You don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Uh, But one thing to think about while you're on your road, on the road, is just to be, you know, you always have to be conscious of what's going on with your dog. Is my dog having an upset stomach? Is something going on intestinally with it? Is the dog feeling okay? And the best way to understand how the dog is feeling is to look at its number twos. Uh, if they're really loose and runny, that's a good indication that the dog is not feeling well. It has uh, an upset stomach. Maybe it's stressed out. Something has obviously changed in that dog's life where it's not feeling good now. So a good indication of that is just looking at the number twos coming out of your dog. And a good easy way to do that is you stake your dog out and then it goes to the bathroom. And then you can easily check whether you know you have a nice firm typical looking number two or maybe it's loose and runny. Um, and at that point you know you have the dog with an upset stomach or something like that. So getting your dog comfortable going to the bathroom on a stakeout And, you know, especially on a trip where you're away from home and you want to be, you want to know exactly what's going on with your dog all the time. So you can't just wake up in the morning and let your dog out of the kennel and tell it to go do its business and it runs off and you don't really pay attention to it and what it does. Because if you don't pay attention to it, how do you know how it's feeling? A perfect example, this last January, we went down to Arizona and we staked up all our dogs, just like we always do on our hunting, on our hunting trips. And my liver female, on the second or third day, ended up having the runs, uh, really loose stools. And she even had just a tiny little blood mixed into her stool. And if I didn't have that dog staked out and going to the bathroom on that stakeout every morning, I would have never known this. Um, so once I saw that, I started to realize that the dog probably wasn't feeling well. It had an upset stomach, whether it was due to a different water it was drinking from down there, or maybe the dog was just stressed out from travel or whatever was going on. I went and I got some brown rice for the dog, a little bit of pumpkin, started feeding it that in the evenings with its regular meal. And the the problem resolved itself the dog's poops firmed up and her stools weren't runny anymore and after a couple days of doing this i saw the energy levels in my dog start to change she was a little bit run down it seemed like she didn't quite have the stamina and after we got rid of that problem she perked back up at the end of the trip and was back to normal on the dog that uh i knew that i had so that's just one another important aspect of getting your dog comfortable and used to being on a stakeout is not just chilling there and being calm and cool and collected, but also being able to go to the bathroom on a stakeout because when you're on the road, uh, life, it's again, it's home life versus field life. Field life is so much different than what you're doing at home and stakeouts are a great way to mix into your routine of what you do at home to get your dog mentally prepared for going on 
that trip. So let's go back to one thing I skipped with kennels um, and kennel time and road trips is maybe you're going on a hunting trip with a buddy, you're using one vehicle, you have multiple dogs, but you have limited kennel space. So is your dog prepared to share a kennel? If you have to double up a dog with um, another dog, uh, whether it's a dog of your own or a friend's or hunting buddy's dog, is your dog mentally prepared to be in a kennel and share a kennel with another dog? And this also goes down to be able to read your personality of your dog. You know, is your dog accepting of other dogs or is it not accepting of other dogs? But if you have a dog that's accepting of other dogs and can be confined in a space with other dogs, it's still a little bit of a different thing to get it used to. So if you have multiple dogs, I would maybe try putting, you know, you, this doesn't have to be an everyday thing where you're giving the dog the, you know, putting two dogs together in a kennel. You just want the dog to be comfortable with it from time to time. It's in, you know, life on the road. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes you have to be, you know, not crammed into another space, but you have to share a space with another dog. And if your dog is mentally prepared to do that, you're going to be that much more successful on your trip and your dog is going to be a lot less stressed out about being with another dog. So just something to, something to chew, chew on there. Okay, getting into feeding times with your dog on the road. Um, let's say you're on a hunting trip. You hunt all day. Then when you finish up your hunt, you have to travel back to wherever you're staying for the night or the duration of your trip. Whether you're at an Airbnb, you have a campsite set up, camper, whatever it is. You go back to your spot where you're staying, and now, geez, it's after dark because you hunted all day until almost last last light you get back and it's time to feed your dog well not a problem absolutely what should happen you feed your dog when you get back to camp right now i i'm not saying i i guess just a micro topic here you know obviously make sure your dog has had some time to rest before its last run before you eat or before the dogs eat because you don't want the dog to get bloated and its stomach to flip um after it's exercised had a really big run, and if you feed it too fast after that run, your dog's stomach could flip and have bloat, which can cause a lot of problems and uh, an emergency trip to the vet. So before you feed, obviously, just make sure your dog has had plenty of time, an hour or so in between runs and feeding time. So let's say you get back to camp, it's time to feed your dog. Now, if you, have, again, going back to home life, field life, let's say your home life is I feed my dog at 5 30, 6 o'clock every single day. That dog's metabolism has become adjusted and used to that feeding time every single day. So it's maybe it's at that point, if it's, let's say, it's 9 o'clock and your dog is used to being fed at 5 30, that's a pretty big gap for that dog's metabolism. I'm not saying dogs can't adapt to it because they definitely can. We're just trying to talk about the aspect of making sure my dog can be successful as possible on this trip. And a dog that has a metabolism that's changing, even though the dog might be able to handle it and be fine on the outside. Um, it might not always react as well, especially when it comes to times with um, feeding and correlation to its digestive system. So we want that dog to be able to digest its food the best it possibly can on this hunting trip to get the most out of that energy that you're putting into it. So what I do with my dogs is I try not to stick to one single feeding time where I say, oh, it's 5.30, I'm going to feed the dogs today, this evening. I try and look at it as it's you're getting fed either between time A and time B because when we're on the road, we might have a day off. I feed you a little earlier or maybe we didn't hunt as long. I'll feed you a little bit earlier on that day or maybe we all hunted all day long. We didn't get camp back to camp till late and this is when I'm going to feed you. So I want my dog's digestive system to be used to that type of feeding schedule and not a feeding schedule of just, I feed you at 5.30 every single day. Uh, because when you go on the road, you can't always just stick to that type of schedule that you do at home. So again, just trying to get my dog's metabolism and feeding schedule into something that's going to match and line up a little bit better for when we're on the road and traveling with that dog. Um, and let's say 
outside of feeding times, maybe you're going to give your dog supplements on a trip while you go out. Um, you want to make sure your dog is used to those supplements and is fully adapted to them um, being in its digestive system before you just go out on a trip and you start giving your dog, you know, something new, something it hasn't had yet. And maybe its digestive system reacts different to it. It gives the dogs the runs. The dog now has an upset stomach. And again, it's just something new in its diet that it's not used to. So if you're going to give your dog supplements, um, maybe a little bit of wet food to get it to encourage to eat after a long day of hunting, you want to make sure your dog's digestive system is used to getting that before you go out and just start giving your dog stuff that it hasn't had before for the first time on a hunting trip while it's in a new environment. So you're trying to set your dog up for success by getting it used to the, any type of supplements you're going to give the dogs before you go on the trip leading up to it. So maybe you're giving it uh, some type of treat that has uh, must not muscle builder, but what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, muscle, ah, gosh, I'm not, I'm not a total expert on this, so don't phrase me on this, but something that's going to help the dog recover faster from long, strenuous workouts. Um, again, something that's going to help the dog recover. You're going to give it to it on a long hunting trip to be able to recover muscles faster, and you want that dog's digestive system to be used to getting that type of protein or food or whatever it is so it can handle and digest that stuff without ease while on that trip. Um, maybe you have a picky eater on a hunting trip and after a long day of hunting or being in a different situation, it doesn't necessarily want to eat. Um, one of my dogs is definitely like that. The other two, I could offer them food at any point in time of the day and they would gladly take it. But one of my dogs, um, when it's in a little bit of a different situation, a scenario, it's not always crazy about eating. Uh, so how do you encourage a dog to eat? You, you spice it up a little bit. I'm not saying you just switch from your regular dry food to a whole thing of canned wet food that's a lot more enticing to eat, um, but you could add uh, maybe an egg in there or just a little bit of wet dog food, mix it in with some water just to make it a little bit more appetizing um, for the dog to eat than it's just its regular dry kibble to encourage it to eat. So. If the dog is not used to having that type of food in its digestive system, then obviously it might not react well to it while you're on a trip if you're giving it to, to it for the first time on that trip. Uh, another thing that I'll do with my dogs on a trip is I will often float their food, which means filling their food up, their kibble, with water so when they eat, they get hydrated at the same time as well. And when you do this, it can often, often cause the dogs to have the runs. So one thing I try and do in combat and build my dogs up to this to overcome that is start floating their food, you know, a month or so before hunting season. I'll just start lightly putting a little bit of water in there and build it up every, every meal. And then from here on out before hunting season, the dog's food is floated for them. Uh, so they get a little bit of water with their food, a little bit of moisture. It does make their their number two is just a little bit softer and liquidy, especially when you first start it. But by the time we're ready to go on a hunting trip, their digestive systems are fully adapted to it. They're back to their normal solid stools and everybody is happy, hydrated and ready to go while we're hunting. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here with this episode and first episode of Bird Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope there was something in there that you could take away, something that we talked about, um, maybe a little bit, maybe there's something you can try and mix up and do with uh, your routine at home that's a little bit different on your day-to-day -day basis of th some things you do. Just trying to get your dog mentally prepared to go on that hunting trip this fall, especially if it's, you know, a first trip that you're you're planning with some buddies, you guys want to go out for four or five days out west, maybe you're coming up to a Great Lake state to go grouse hunting. Wherever it is you're going to the Dakotas to pheasant hunt in November, whatever it is you're doing, you want your dog to be not just physically prepared, but mentally prepared to be able to do that trip and have a good time doing it. Because if your dog is stressed out, frustrated about the situation it's in, I can tell you, you're going to be stressed out. You're going to be frustrated. And we want to set ourselves all up for success so everybody can go out, hunt, have a good time, and have a good successful hunting trip. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully there's something you can take away with this. Um, if you guys 
have any suggestions for any other topics that you want to hear talked about, um, always open for ideas, suggestions, drop something in a comment, shoot us a message on Instagram. Uh, you can send us an email, uplander18 at gmail.com. As always, appreciate the support. Thank you guys for tuning in. And yeah, look forward to jumping on here again soon and talking. I'm not exactly sure what the schedule or routine for this is going to be. I'm going to try and keep it somewhat consistent. It might not be something we do every week, but I definitely want to get in some type of routine of doing this somewhat consistently. I have a few other things in mind to talk about that I think could bring some value to people. Um, again, anything you want to hear about, any suggestions. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much or get too long-winded on stuff. Just bear with me for episodes one, two, and three as I try and get in the swing of this. This is all new content that I'm trying to deliver, um, and maybe I stumble over myself a few times or get long-winded, but we're all trying to improve as we go here. So appreciate you listening, tuning in if you've made it this far, and thanks again. We'll see you guys soon.